Uh, good afternoon, Long Beach. Today is our briefing for Monday, June 15th, um, 2020. And as a reminder, we are now uh, doing our uh, community and press briefings uh, twice a week. So that'll be Mondays and Thursdays mm -hmm. at 3 p.m. Uh, as some of you already know, because you visit our online dashboard, we have uh, 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 over uh, 2,600 residents have tested positive for COVID uh, in Long Beach, uh, and a little over 2,000 of them have recovered. Uh, we have a total of 114 um, of our residents who have passed to COVID. And as we know, um, re reporting isn't happening on, uh, on Monday for Sunday. And so uh, tomorrow's report will have a combined uh, two-day report as far as um, any passings that we've had. And so our thoughts go out to all of them. And 88 of the fatalities of the 118 have been from long-term uh, care facilities. Uh, I want to just start with a, um, a brief announcement, and then we're going to get to some COVID, some COVID information. Uh, last Tuesday, the Long Beach City Council unanimously approved uh, our city's framework for reconciliation in Long Beach, and uh, that framework uh, has really come out of the conversations, the demonstrations, the protests uh, that have happened not just Long Beach but in here, but really across the country. Um, and our framework in Long Beach, it was unanimously adopted by the City Council is really looking at change to address uh, systemic racism, uh, racial injustices, and ensuring equity for, uh, for everyone in our community. Uh, we know this is a, uh, a very difficult time uh, as it relates to, um, to equity across the country. Uh, we have to acknowledge that we have a long way to go locally, but also as a nation. Um, and so within our framework that really begins this week, there are four key steps. Uh, the first is acknowledging the existence and longstanding impacts of systemic racism here in Long Beach and in our country. Uh, we have done that, we continue to do so. Um, the second is to listen uh, to accounts and experiences of racial injustice, inequity, or harm to community members. Um, that listening process is actually starting uh, this week through a formal process through the staff. Um, I personally have also been meeting um, with different groups of folks I met with some young, uh, uh, some uh, youth of color and uh, that were um, within our high schools and, and, and our middle schools and, and, and spoke with them. I've talked to some black educators and scholars from Long Beach and I will continue to do, to do that as well. But the listening is really important. That's something we've heard uh, 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 often from the community. Um, then also we'll be convening stakeholders to evaluate the feedback from the listening process and shape policy or budget our charter, and any programmatic ideas to reform that we might have. And then, of course, we're going to be taking action, which is where our city management team will be presenting immediate short-term and longer-term recommendations for the city council. And so all of that and that framework was adopted last week, and now the listening uh, uh, sessions uh, begin this week. We encourage folks that want more information uh, to please visit. If you go to the Long Beach Health Department's website, and you go to the Office of Equity link, uh, and you on, in the Office of Equity link, which is the office leading this work for us, uh, you will find a lot of information on how the reconciliation framework works, how to get involved, uh, how to attend and be a part of one of these uh, listening sessions, uh, and how you can also directly get involved in this work. If you have any questions or ideas, you can also email us at equitylb at longbeach.gov. That's equitylb at longbeach.gov. Um, we have a real diverse team of city leadership and staff that are leading this effort. And so I want to thank them. And we're looking forward to this process uh, as it begins. But I also want to turn uh, to, to COVID-19. And as we talk about racial injustice, we know that COVID-19 uh, as a health crisis has especially impacted the black community. Um, black residents make up 13% of the population yet account for 23% of our COVID deaths here. Um, black residents are also hospitalized for asthma 9.4 times more um, than others. And we know that there are not just racial disparities uh, within all systems, but especially within health as well, which is why these conversations are so important. And as we speak about COVID, I wanted to talk about uh, what Long Beach is doing as we move forward. The first is, as a reminder, there's been a series of studies that have come out um, recently, and, and Dr. Davis and others will tell you um, that uh, wearing face coverings and masks is more important um, than ever. Uh, as more and more of the economy opens up, uh, you should be always wearing a face covering or mask when you're leaving your home, when you're interacting with other people, 
uh, when, uh, and certainly when you're going into a business, um, it is required. Uh, we know there are obviously some ex exemptions if you are at a restaurant, um, but overall, people should be wearing face coverings. It really is the safest way to stop this disease that is still very serious. And as it relates to COVID, um, we have a couple of announcements from the city perspective. I uh, want to first update you that our, at our public library system, uh, we are launching a curbside pickup for materials and books starting on June 23rd. And we're launching a library virtual version of our summer reading program as well. We know that libraries are a really important place for people and families. Um, it's hard to not have them open right now. We, we're coming up working with plans on how to reopen our library safely, but we want folks to be able to also uh, get books and have curbside pickup. Um, and our librarians, we want to make sure that they're safe and our workers in our libraries as well. So you can learn more about these programs at lbpl.org. And now I want to also talk about um, day camps and our summer programming for the city. Uh, this is uh, difficult news because we know that our summer programming is a really important part of uh, what happens uh, every summer in Long Beach. Uh, we have uh, great programs. Our 100 Days of Summer programming includes concerts and festivals and gatherings for families. Um, and because of this health uh, pandemic, which is still occurring and still real, real in our city and the state, uh, we are having to dramatically um, eliminate and reduce uh, much of our summer programming. Um, as of today, um, the state will not and does not allow uh, gatherings um, uh, of, of, of individuals um, un unless it is uh, specified in, in the guidelines. And so any type of, of gatherings uh, where you're having groups of people are currently not allowed by the state. And so because of that, we are not able uh, uh, to put together some of the program that we would normally have during the summer. This includes activities like our Movies in the Park program, our park concerts, and other types of festivals that happen during the summer. Uh, we'd love to be able to do these uh, in a way that was safe for everyone. Um, they're just not allowed by the state of California. And because they're not allowed anywhere in the state, in any county, uh, including Lo uh, Los Angeles County, we cannot do them. These programs would typically be starting in the next week. You'd start seeing some of this programming as school got out. And so um, those are, are unfortunately not happening this year. Um, however, there is some, some good news of what we're doing. So while our traditional parks and rec programming um, will, will not continue in the way it always has and the summer programming that we put out over the summer, we are consolidating a lot of those programmings and uh, activities that we have into some new day camps that the city will be sponsoring. Um, these day camps uh, are going to be available all across the city. And these day camps will be opportunities for parents to be able to leave their, uh, their kids, their youth, uh, uh, with you know, trained uh, um, facilitators and park and recreation leaders in the city uh, to have um, exercise programs, to have uh, programs to reduce any sort of uh, uh, mental health issues, uh, and really to help the emotional and well-being of, of, the, full, of the full child. Uh, there will be opportunities you know, at, at many of our parks across the city for these day camps. Uh, these types of camps typically for a parent could cost over $100, $125 um, in Long Beach even just last year. Uh, we're gonna be offering these camps for as, as little as uh, $30 to $35 a week. Um, and if we're an extended camp for a week, it could be around $50 a week. Uh, the city's putting out information on the details of these camp programs uh, in, uh, later today. Um, but just to give you some, some examples, these day camps will be opportunities for uh, parents to leave their kids really for child care, for child supervision, so that parents can go to work and do, do the other functions they need to over the summer. The camps will have strict guidelines on the number of children that can participate. They will have uh, physical distancing requirements. There will be sanitation measures put in place, and interactions will be limited within the camps to make sure the kids stay safe. For five to 12 year olds, we'll have programs at 22 sites across the city. Um, and uh, some of these sites include Admiral Kid Park, Bayshore, Bixby Park, Cesar Chavez, the Colorado Lagoon, Coolidge, Drake Park, El Dorado, Houghton, MLK, McBride, Orizaba, Pan Am Park, Ramona, 
Seaside Park, Schwer Park, Silverado, Somerset, Stearns, Veterans, Waterloo Park, and Whaley Park. For our older kids that are aged between 13 and 18 years old, we'll have these types of day camp programs at four park sites, including the Freeman Community Center, Houghton Park, McBride Park, and Silverado. And in addition, we will be launching our summer food program at 30 sites across the city. Most of the parks that have already been listed, but, but also some additional parks. Uh, this is a free food program so that kids can get nutritious meals uh, during the summer. And um, all this information will be available uh, on, our, on our Parks and Recreation website. Um, some more announcements. Uh, we've worked hard to ensure that our Long Beach Junior Lifeguard Program can continue this summer, uh, and it will be able to um, with modifications that aligned with uh, our health orders and state guidance. Um, staggered times will, re will be required, um, and there will also be two sessions a day that will run from July 6th through August 14th for our Junior Lifeguard Program. As always, please visit Long Beach uh, jgs.com for junior for juniorguards.com and that gives a lot more information about the junior lifeguard program so it will be different um, this year because of of, of covid but we're still going to have that program as well uh, we know there's a lot of other activities over the summer that people enjoy we have not yet opened yet we're working on it we know there are swimming pools at belmont silverado uh, king um, are not yet open um, we're working on plans for those our nature center classes that happen over the summer are not happening. Uh, youth and adult sports programs um, are not yet uh, allowed by the state. So we, we don't have that programming. Um, and, uh, and as far as youth sports go, we are working closely with the organizations that typically get permits for these uh, activities. Um, and obviously we have groups like AYSO and Little League, uh, Pony and others um, they, th these activities are just not yet permitted by the state of California. And we've been given no indication as to when they will be allowed. Uh, and so as of now, they are, they are not allowed in Long Beach. Uh, once they're, if they're at some point, there's changes at the state level to allow these types of activities in a way that is safe. Um, Long Beach will have to work directly with these organizations to see if the timing even works because many of these, as you know, um, organizations uh, it, it, it takes organization to put them in place uh, and time. And so uh, we know that that, is, uh, uh, that, that, that clock is, is ticking away. Um, and let me finally say that you can get all this information at the longbeach.gov slash uh, park and recreation website, which is uh, longbeach.gov forward slash, I believe it's parks, is that right? Uh, the, the, uh, the park website. Um, and just just parks and rec on this on the city website. You'll be able to get all this all this information. Uh, so again, uh, we know that um, a lot of the summer programming would normally have is just not allowed by the state of California. Uh, and so we were modifying what what is allowed by the state of California are day camps for youth. And so we're consolidating all of our summer programming into these day camps for young people across the city. We'll hope we hope that will help parents this summer. Um, and as soon as we hear about the more organized sports from the state, if it is even allowed this summer, we will do those as, as well. Um, and so with that, I want to, again, just remind folks that these decisions are hard ones, uh, but they are to keep our community safe. Um, we're, people are dying every single day still in Long Beach because of COVID-19, and we've got to stay um, serious and ensure that we keep people safe. With that, I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Davis, who has uh, additional updates. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. Um, as our city continues reopening, I want to remind everyone that there's no way to ensure zero risk of infection. Um, we're still all safer at home. The risks of widespread community transmission are still a very real threat to the health and safety of our community here in Long Beach. Taking precautions seriously is especially important if you or someone you live with is at high risk for severe illness from COVID-19, including anyone 65 years and older and those with chronic underlying health conditions. 
it's still recommended that these individuals stay home as much as possible to avoid unnecessary uh, exposures or being around other people who have COVID-19 and could be contagious. Of course, if you have COVID-19 or you have symptom, symptoms that could be COVID-19 or you've been in close contact with someone who has COVID-19, you must still self-isolate or self-quarantine at home. For everyone else, it's important to consider the risks and continue to implement various prevention measures to protect yourself and reduce the spread of COVID-19. So it's like driving or riding in a car. Uh, there's risks involved every time that you ride or drive in a car, uh, but the seat belts, airbags, rear view cameras, and other safety precautions uh, lessen those risks. But nothing except not getting in the car brings your risk to zero. So that's what's similar to uh, COVID-19, and so we're going to go over what the seat belts and airbags are for COVID-19 to lessen your risk. So the first thing is to consider how many people you'll be interacting with, for how long, and for how close together you're going to be to those other people. Um, so it's a numbers game. The more people you interact with, the longer your interaction with them, and the closer, the, the more proximal you are um, to these other people, uh, incre all increase your risk, give you a higher risk of becoming infected. Um, so your precautions are basically to interact with fewer people um, for shorter periods at longer distances away from you. So engaging with people that you don't live with increases your risk. And also uh, interacting with people with a great number of people um, increases your risk. And uh, be sure to keep in mind that even if you're not showing symptoms, you could still be contagious. Make sure that you maintain at least six feet of space between you and others. So that's the proximity seatbelt. Um, the closer you are to other people who may be infected, the greater your risk of becoming infected or infecting them. Um, so the farther you are, the better. The shorter amount of time, the better. So if you can limit your interactions, if possible, to 10 or 15 minutes uh, with other people um, who aren't in your household, that lessens your risk than if you had a longer interaction with people that close by you. If you can keep six feet, then you can have a longer interaction. But if they're getting close to you, then you want to try to keep the interaction um, as short as possible. And then when you, have, um, when you are having an interaction within six feet, uh, make sure that you wear a face covering anytime you can't maintain that six feet. Wearing a face covering doesn't uh, eliminate the risk of contracting the virus, but it does minimize the spread of um, potentially infectious particles that you're expelling when you speak, cough, or sneeze. And remember that you wearing a face mask is protecting others and other people wearing a face mask around you is protecting you. So it's important that both people who are interacting are wearing their face masks. Um, also, it's thought that staying outdoors, if you are interacting with people, interacting outdoors is better than interacting indoors. Um, the, when you're outside, it allows you to maintain more distance between yourself and another person. And it also, the wind um, disperses the particles uh, more quickly. And finally, just as a reminder, um, as the mayor said, uh, right now all gatherings, regardless of size, consisting of individuals from multiple households are still prohibited under the Safer at Home order. And remember to always wash your hands and disinfect high touch surfaces frequently. So now I want to move on to um, a syndrome called uh, the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Right now, children under 18 years of age make up less than 5% of all positive COVID-19 cases in Long Beach. Uh, but there is evidence of a complication that seems to be affecting some children. And this syndrome is called the Multisystem Inflammatory Syndrome in Children, um, MISC or MISC for short, 
and it's a condi condition in children that may be associated with COVID-19 infection. While we don't have any confirmed cases of MISC in Long Beach, I wanted to make uh, people aware of this rare but serious condition that's been observed in children elsewhere in the nation and in the world. So multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children is a condition where different body parts can become inflamed, including the, hearts, the heart, lungs, kidneys, brain, skin, eyes, or gastrointestinal organs. We do not yet know what causes MISC. However, we know that many children with MISC had the virus that causes COVID-19 or have been around someone else with COVID-19. While MISC is rare, it can be serious and even deadly. But most children who were diagnosed with this condition have improved with medical care. Common symptoms of this syndrome include irritability or sluggishness, uh, stomach pain without any other explanation, diarrhea, vomiting, rash, conjunctivitis, which is red or pink eyes, um, enlarged lymph nodes on the neck, will be kind of big bumps that you'll feel, um, red cracked lips, or a red tongue that looks like a strawberry, swollen hands and feet, which may also be red. Um, and just to note that not all children have all of these symptoms or all the same symptoms. Call your child's doctor if your child has a persistent fever plus any of the above symptoms. The doctor will ask about the symptoms your child has and use that information to determine next steps. If your child is severely ill, go to the nearest emergency room or call 911 immediately. Make sure to wear a face covering before entering. Doctors may do certain tests to look for inflammation or other signs of disease. These tests might include blood tests, a chest x-ray, a heart ultrasound, otherwise known as an echocardiogram, um, and an abdominal ultrasound. Doctors may provide supportive care for symptoms, such as medicine or fluids, to help your child feel better, and may use various medicines to treat inflammation. Most children who become ill with MISC will need to be treated in the hospital. Some will need to be treated in the pediatric intensive care unit. MISC is not contagious, but it is possible that MISC is associated with COVID-19 or another infection that may be contagious. Hospitals will take infection control measures when treating your child. Uh, public health officials are still learning about M MISC and how it affects children. We still don't know why some children have gotten sick with MISC and others haven't. We also do not know if children with certain health conditions are more likely to get MISC. These are among the many questions that health officials are trying to understand and working towards. So in closing, for more information about COVID-19, please remember to visit our website at www.longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19 or contact our info line, 562-570-4636. Thank you. Are there any questions, Kevin? Yes, Mayor. We have a few questions from the media. The first question is from Kelly at the Long Beach Post. Um, this question is for Dr. Davis. It's been two weeks since the mass protest in Long Beach. Have we seen any case increase attributed to this? And can the city talk about steps it is taking to determine if protest gatherings are impacting case numbers? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, we have not seen a uh, spike at this point that we could attribute to the protests. Um, it will take some time. Um, there's about, you know, the 
Incubation period can be two to 14 days, so that's how long it can take for you to develop symptoms. Um, and so you have to wait that time period and then be tested and then the turnaround time for the test and then we have to contact you. Uh, we are asking uh, people if they've, uh, when we um, interview them, if they've been to a protest. Um, we have had some people who have said yes. However, just them saying that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the reason or the expo where the exposure happened, um, where they came into contact with someone else with, um, with the virus who was contagious. Um, because it's transmitting and um, circulating within our community, it could be that they got it from somewhere else. Um, I don't know if I remember all the parts of that question. We, so we continue to, you know, we're, we're watching our um, cases every day. Um, and the, the problem or the issue, the challenge is going to be figuring out, because there are so many things that we're changing, being able to isolate each variable and say that's the reason why um, cases are going up is going to be difficult because we also had Mother's Day. We started reopening at that time. We had Memorial Day, which anecdotally uh, seemed to, there seemed to be more um, celebrations around Memorial Day, and we've continued to um, reopen, and so it'll be difficult to, to parse out um, what's causing increases, which we do expect to see because we are opening our economy and um, people are able to interact more. All right. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Mm -hmm. Next question comes from Rachel Jordan from ABC. Rachel, go ahead. Thanks. So this question is for the mayor. Um, I've seen uh, on social media a lot of people are complaining that they're noticing more and more people not wearing masks in Long Beach. And now, as we know, Orange County is no longer requiring masks. So are there any plans to begin requiring uh, and not just recommending masks whenever leaving the house in Long Beach, similar to Mayor Garcetti's order from last month? Uh, so I think first people should be wearing face masks and face coverings. And actually, Long Beach does require that you wear a face covering or face mask when you are entering a, a retail business or an establishment or whether you are around others. So that actually is a requirement um, uh, in, in Long Beach. Uh, there's a lot of individuals that are choosing to not do so. We understand that. It's, it is irresponsible. In my opinion, it's also um, uh, not supportive of our most vulnerable people in our community. We know that folks that are asymptomatic can transfer COVID uh, to uh, your parents, your grandparents, uh, someone's grandparents that are vulnerable uh, and um, can cause death and, and, and great sickness. So we wish folks would be more responsible. I will tell you that it's, it's really, it really depends on the day. I, I will uh, be out one day uh, driving and I'll see most folks out with face coverings or face masks and there might be another day where it's, 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 le it's less so. So it's, uh, it's just really, I think, dependent. Wear a face covering. It's the best way to protect yourself if you're gonna be out, you're gonna to go to places, you need to have a face covering. And if you are a business, you are required to ask your customers to have face coverings or masks um, and when you enter. And it's not just to protect them, it's to protect your workers. And your workers deserve to work in an environment that is safe. So um, we, we wanna continue work. We've been talking, uh, I've been chatting with other folks about uh, strengthening our mask and face covering requirements as more begin to open, I would support that. I think that, um, that that's something that's being discussed from a medical professional perspective. Uh, obviously, they want to make sure that um, face coverings are worn, but they, they don't also, they shouldn't also uh, be used as an excuse to not physically distance or be safe in other ways. So we'll, we'll continue to push that issue. Thank you, Mayor. Another question from the Long Beach Post. Many people have described restaurants not following public health orders over the weekend. How is the city enforcing this in restaurants? So, um, yeah, I, 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 think, I, I think last Friday we may have announced a new phone number and email to report um, any business, restaurant, or other that is not complying with the health orders. Uh, that number is 562-570-2600. Three three, and the email is C E Task Force at LongBeach.gov, and I think that stands for Code Enforcement Task Force. So C E Task Force at LongBeach.gov. You could email or call uh, uh, any any tips on on anyone that's not 
uh, complying. But also, I do believe this last weekend, the health department had a team uh, of individuals go out to restaurants across the city um, to look for compliance and to make sure that there was the compliance was happening. So they did interact and provide education to a variety of restaurants, I believe, and fitness gyms this last weekend. They will be doing the same this upcoming weekend. And, and to be very honest, um, it's in the best interest of the restaurant to follow the order and do it safely because most of the folks that I talk to, when they've gone out to a restaurant and they're feeling like it's unsafe, they're walking right back out or they're not coming back. And so I think for the, for, for, from a business perspective, it makes sense to follow and be as safe as possible in those, in those establishments. Um, you know, tied into that point, uh, tomorrow night, the council is voting on, um, on a bunch of new open streets and, and kind of parklet programs in the city to assist more restaurants. So I think that's happening tomorrow night as well. So we'll continue to do that work, but they'll be out again this weekend. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we now have a couple of questions from social media. Why are we reopening? Dr. Davis, or for me? Um, it can be for you. Why are we reopening more businesses and activities when cases and deaths are rising? So the city is following the kind of state guidelines as far as the timeline as to what to reopen and when. Uh, Long Beach uh, and the county have actually moved slower in this last round than the, than the rest of the state. Um, there are some activities that um, Dr. Davis and the, and the county health officers feel as are still too high risk uh, to reopen at this time. Um, and so, um, you know, we're not uh, where, where many other uh, communities are. So I think that there, our team is being more cautious in the reopenings. I think, you know, obviously um, other places have bars or family centers that have reopened. Uh, that has not happened uh, in Long Beach or the, the rest of the county. There's a variety of other industries that may open on Friday in other parts of the state. The city um, uh, may or may not reopen those other industries, uh, depending on what the data looks like this week. Uh, and so um, I think that the, the, the city has been much more um, cautious and slow in those reopenings and will continue to do so, and we should not rush. Um, but it is concerning. I mean, every time we understand, I mean, it's, it's a, from a job and economic perspective, um, uh, we are moving this economy forward. That, that's something that I mean, clearly the governor's plan is to slowly reopen the state. I think we're all following that. Um, but we should all be concerned, and which is why wearing face coverings or masks or being, or being cautious is really important. If you're feeling unsafe, please continue to stay home. Um, a lot of us are, are staying home uh, much of the time, and that's keeping a lot of folks safe. All right. Thank you, Mayor. One last question on social media. Dr. Davis, are churches allowed to be open? And can you talk ab about that a little? Yes. So um, churches are allowed. Um, I would, to get into the details, I would recommend going to the Safer at Home order. If you just Google Long Beach Safer at Home order, um, I'll say what I remember, but to verify, um, churches are able to open, all faith-based uh, centers are able to open, uh, mosques, synagogues, churches, what have you, uh, temples, and um, with modifications. So that is decreasing the occupancy um, to either 25% of the occupancy or 100, whichever is less. Um, and all of the uh, types of modifications that go towards, you know, encouraging people who are sick to stay home, encouraging physical distancing, uh, recommending not singing, um, uh, modifications around things like communion. Um, you also can uh, have uh, worship services outside and um, there's uh, there's a limit on the amount of people that can participate in that way too. But you can have faith-based services um, in person under the order right now. All right, thank you, Dr. Davis. That's the last question on social media. Muy buenas tardes. Gracias por acompañarnos hoy. Empezaremos con nuestra, um, nuestros números del coronavirus de partir de hoy, 15 de junio. Um, indica que 2,634 personas han salido positivos al coronavirus. Aproximadamente 2,036 personas se han recuperado. 
Hemos perdido 114 residentes de Long Beach a causa del coronavirus y 88 de estas muertes han sido asociados con centros de enfermería de largo plazo. Um, platicamos un poco sobre el marco de la reconciliación, la alcaldía. Uh, uh, las, desde la semana pasada, como les uh, contamos, aprobó una una amenidad de los planes para marco de reconciliación en Long Beach. Esto es sobre el racismo sistémico que existe en todas las instituciones públicas, que incluye también nuestra ciudad y nuestra comunidad. El marco de reconciliación le dará a la ciudad la oportunidad de escuchar a la comunidad que exige cambios y tomar medidas para resolver las injusticias raciales y equidad para todos. So hay cuatro, hay cuatro uh, etapas o pasos que son muy claves. Es primeramente reconociendo la existencia y los impactos de larga data del racismo sistémico en Long Beach y en todo el país. Escuchar las experiencias de injusticia racial, inequidad o daño de los miembros de la comunidad. Convocar las partes interesadas para evaluar los comentarios del proceso y de escuchar y dar forma a las ideas de política, presupuestos, estatus y reforma programática. Acción catalizadora, donde la administración de la ciudad presentará recomendaciones inmediatas a corto, mediado o largo plazo para consideración de nuestra alcaldía. A partir de este jueves y hasta julio, los residentes de Long Beach tendrán la oportunidad para participar en una serie de sesiones de colaboración para escuchar en la comunidad al estilo como un grupo pequeño, de grupos focales. Podrá participar y proporcionar ideas para crear un cambio significativo para todos los aspectos de la inequidad y la injusticia racial. Por ahora, de acuerdo con nuestras órdenes de salud y medidas de distanciamiento físico, las sesiones um, de escucha tendrán uh, y se estarán dando um, no en persona, sino que virtualmente. Esta re retroalimentación ayudará a dar forma a las ideas de política, presupuestos y reforma para consideración de la alcaldía para implementar la reforma estructural en julio y agosto de este año. En Long Beach, la pandemia de coronavirus ha impactado especialmente a la comunidad negra. Los residentes negros representan el 13% de la población en la ciudad, pero representan el 23% de las muertes Uh, justo dado al, del virus, del coronavirus. Los residentes negros también son hospitalizados por asma 9.4 veces más que los residentes blancos. Eliminar las desigualdades raciales en los ingresos y la riqueza beneficiará a las familias, las comunidades y la economía local y regional. Long Beach es una de las ciudades más diversas del país y estamos orgullosos de eso. Ahora debemos trabajar más duro para nunca para asegurarnos de todos que nuestra ciudad tenga la oportunidad de prosperar. Uh, algunos datos sobre nuestra, pro, nuestra biblioteca y la ciudad en, en nuestra comunidad. Este, nos, sabemos que nuestra biblioteca es un recurso importante en nuestra ciudad para proporcionar todo desde libros, películas y hasta estudios de idiomas y recursos profesionales. Aunque las bibliotecas permanecen cerradas al público, cuatro ubicaciones proporcionarán la recogida de sus libros y pedidos um, afuera de la biblioteca del, a, a partir de la próxima semana, el 23 de junio. Uh, la biblioteca también está lanzando una versión virtual de su programa de lectura del verano. So, el programa de lectura de verano es una forma divertida para los niños y jóvenes para que se mantengan en, en más todavía leyendo y sus lecturas. Es muy importante que, um, que sigan estudiando uh, y contra la pérdida de aprendizaje durante el verano. So, hay más información disponible en nuestro sitio de web de la librería en la ciudad de Long Beach. Uh, también algunos datos sobre nuestros parques. Sabemos que no todos los servicios recreativos están abiertos todavía, pero queremos avisarles que los parques se han convertido en una parte crítica de la repertura de la comunidad y la economía de Long Beach. Muchos de los servicios de los parques unirán para proveer campamentos de día para la comunidad, especialmente para los niños y los jóvenes. Eh, áreas saludables crean, los parques crean áreas saludables en el aire libre para hacer ejercicio, mejoran su salud mental, especialmente ahorita en estos momentos puede reducir el estrés y claramente mejora el bienestar psicológico, emocional y físico, especialmente para los niños y toda la familia. Este, vamos a abrir ciertos, um, ciertos parques en la ciudad. 
Este, para los niños de 5 a 12 años, tendremos programas en 22 de esos sitios. Para los niños de 13 a 18 años, tendremos programas en cuatro de esos sitios. Y adicionalmente, tenemos un programa de alimentación del verano que se ofrece en 30 de los parques y sitios alrededor de la comunidad. Um, puede encontrar más información en nuestro sitio de web de Parks and Recs. Y este... También queremos compartir algunas cosas que todavía no se han abierto. Son las piscinas de Belmont Shore, de Silverado, de King Park y, de, y, y también el Centro de Naturaleza, Museo y Clases. Programas deportivos para jóvenes y adultos. Um, todavía tampoco no se han reabierto. Esa es um, la manera que tenemos que ver que las organizaciones como de, de fútbol, de, de, de béisbol, tienen que todavía tener más reuniones para decidir si es que sí vamos a reabrir y tener esos programas este verano. Si nomás um, tomen esas decisiones, tendremos más información para ustedes. Este, también estamos trabajando estrechamente en colaboración con organizaciones y titulares de, los, de las compañías, de los, de los programas como Pony, Little League, del Béisbol y AYSO también. Um, ahora algunos datos de nuestras actividades personales y sociales que nos dio esta tarde la doctora Davis, la directora del Departamento de Salud, que a medida que nuestra ciudad continúa reabriendo, queremos recordarles a todos que no hay forma de garantizar un riesgo cero, de cero infección. Todos estamos aún más uh, seguros en casa. Queremos recomendarles que se queden en casa lo más uh, posible. Los riesgos de una transmisión comunitaria generalizada siguen siendo una amenaza muy real para la salud y la seguridad de nuestra comunidad. Tomar precauciones con seriedad es especialmente importante si usted o alguien con quien vive tiene un alto riesgo como las personas mayores de 65 años o más o cualquier persona que tenga otros um, problemas de salud crónicas. Todavía se recomienda que estas personas se queden en casa especialmente para evitar exposiciones innecesarias. Si tienes uh, al coronavirus o síntomas del coronavirus ha estado en contacto con alguien que ha salido positivo, es mejor ponerse en cuarentena en su hogar, alejado de otros familiares y amistades. Es, de, de, definitivamente esto todavía es un juego de números um, entre cuantas más personas interactúen y más tiempo dure su inter, interex, interacción, mayor será el riesgo de infectarse o infectar a otros del coronavirus. Um, una, se, seguimos recomendando, sabemos que salió una pregunta sobre esto hace momentos, este, sabemos que otros condados se han visto menos, um, menos personas usando las coberturas, algunos días vemos que más personas las usan, a otros días menos, pero es muy importante aquí en Long Beach, en nuestra ciudad de Long Beach, estamos, um, es, requeremos que se usen las coberturas para la cara, especialmente cuando sale a los lugares a, sea, a recoger hacer compras, a recoger comida, cualquier lugar. Y los, los negocios, es muy importante que los, um, los dueños de estos negocios protejan al público y protejan a sus empleados también. Finalmente, es, uh, las reuniones. Independientemente del tamaño que consisten en individuos de varios hogares, aunque están prohibidas bajo la orden actual más seguro en el hogar, algunos estudios sugieren que el coronavirus no se propaga tan bien, tan bien afuera. Permanecer al aire libre puede permitirle mantener más espacio lo de, a los demás. También puede dispersar gérmenes más fácilmente en comparación con las reuniones interiores que tienen menos ventilación. Por último, recordarles que se laven las manos, desinfectar las superficies de alto contacto con frecuencia. Um, también hemos tenido alguna información sobre un síndrome inflamatorio multisistémico que lo, se ha visto recientemente en los niños. En este momento, los niños menores de 18 años representan menos del 5% de todos los casos positivos del coronavirus en Long Beach. Sin embargo, existe evidencia de una complicación que parece estar afectando a algunos niños. So, el síndrome inflamatorio multisistémico, o como lo voy a mencionar, uh, MISC, no tenemos ningún caso confirmado todavía en nuestra ciudad. Um, esta enfermedad y otras afecciones inflamatorias graves, como la enfermedad de Kawaski y el síndrome de shock, shock tóxico, es una condición rara, sin embargo, debido a que está 
potencialmente mortal, es importante que los padres sepan los síntomas y conozcan algunos de los signos para que puedan obtener ayuda inmediato. Algunos de esos síntomas comunes incluyen irritabilidad o lentitud, dolor abdominal sin otra explicación, cosas como diarrea, vómito, erupción, um, cuando se le ponen los ojos rojos o rosados a los niños, este ganglio linfático agrandado al lado del cuello, labios rojos o lengua roja que parece como se hincha y parece como una fresa, manos y pies hinchados que también pueden estar rojos. No todos los niños agarran estos síntomas, eso es muy importante ponerle atención si su hijo um, siente que su hijo puede tener algunos de esos síntomas mencionados, por favor, llame a su médico inmediatamente. Y si hay alguna fiebre uh, persistente, es, más, es mejor llamar al hospital o que uh, vaya, llame al 911 o que ya vaya al hospital. Pero recuerde que tiene que usar su cobertura para la cara. Las coberturas y, la, y las higiene de las manos, el distanciamiento físico es me, ma, muy importante. Por favor, sigan practicando eso. Los niños con afecciones médicas subsayentes pueden tener un mayor riesgo de malos resultados del coronavirus, lo que hace las medidas de prevención que sean más importantes. Todavía hay mucha um, ciencia que estudiar sobre esta enfermedad y los profesionales de salud pública junto a los médicos todavía siguen investigando esta enfermedad también. Si necesita más información sobre el coronavirus, recuerde visitar nuestro sitio de web a www.longbeach.gov barra diagonal COVID-19 uh, o también puede llamarnos a nuestra, información, a nuestra línea de información de, de, del teléfono. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos esta tarde. Que tengan buen día. Um, that is all the information we have for you today. Thank you and we'll be, we'll be back on Thursday.